Good morning. We begin this Wednesday with some breaking news out of Northwest. I'm Tania Wright. And I'm Corey James. D.C. police are investigating a shooting on Florida Avenue. Let's get right to Joseph Omo, who is live at the scene. Joseph, good morning. Corey and Tania, good morning to the both of you. You see this right next to me. This is traffic here on Florida Avenue Northwest and 3rd Street, something that these streets have not been used to for the past five hours because police have closed them off or had them closed off up until a couple moments ago as they were investigating and trying to get more evidence and answers on the shooting that happened at around 2.30 this morning. I'm going to step out of the way so that way you can see what's left, which is not much, just a normal street here in Washington, D.C. at this point. There is some water on the roadway, if you can catch that there um, on your screen. That water was sprayed by D.C. fire and EMS crews. A big fire truck was here just a couple moments ago as they cleaned up the scene because we are told that the shooting happened outside and not inside one of these homes here. So right now we can confirm that one person has died. A woman is in the hospital. We don't know too much about her condition, but we are told she's expected to survive. Right now, the biggest question in everybody's minds is any word on a suspect and exactly what happened. Police have not told us about a suspect or a uh, or several suspects for the shooting. So we don't know if they already have somebody in custody or if they are still on the search for somebody. Once we get that information, we will bring it to you live on DC News Now and on DCNewsNow.com. Reporting here in Northwest DC, I'm Joseph Olmo. All right, Joseph, thank you. Breaking news this morning. Prince George's County fire officials say two people are in the hospital after a crash sent a car down a 40-foot ravine in the Adelphi area early this morning. This is a photo here into our newsroom from Prince George's fire crews. Now, this is right at the intersection of New Hampshire Avenue and Piney Branch Road. It is right near a branch of the Anacostia River and the Northwest Branch Trail. We do want to go right now to Shanika with more on if this is causing any issues. Well, right now, good news, Corey and Tanaya, this roadway has reopened. So again, this is a picture from earlier. It happened around three this morning. It is reopened now. You have nothing to worry about. Let's flip over to the map so we can see the rest of the problems out there. We're looking at the inner and outer loop of the Beltway in Northern Virginia, right near Braddock Road. We still have this crash causing major delays and it is just slowing things down. This is right in that mixing bowl area in the Annandale Springfield area inner loop of the beltway right before Braddock Road then not too far 66 headed east we're still dealing with this mess right in the middle of uh, 123 and Nutley Street so you're going to find a work zone we also have a crash so it is slowing just everything down not a good morning for 66 again all right over to you Jackie Thanks, Shanika. Yeah, we're starting off with some sunshine out there, so don't forget those sunglasses before you step out the door. And for that morning commute, temperatures into the 60s for many. However, we're still stuck into the 50s out towards Woodstock, one of the cooler spots on the map right now. But for D.C., we're already into a low 70s, and we're low 60s out towards Waldorf, but mid-70s already for Lexington Park. Those dew points quite comfortable. We're seeing that especially along I-81, where we're seeing dew points into the 50s. But as you get closer towards D.C., that's where those dew points are into low 60s, so still comfortable. However, a little bit more of that mugginess to the air as opposed to farther out towards the west. Radar is all clear and also satellite is all clear too. Aside from a few locations where we're seeing some reduced visibility because of some fog. We're down to four miles in Cumberland, nine in Hagerstown, seven in Frederick. Elsewhere, we're seeing a OK visibility. But if you're heading out for maybe a walk in the park, it's not too bad out there. We're seeing temperatures will continue to rise through the day today. By about the afternoon hours, if you're going for your, your afternoon walk, we'll see those temperatures into the mid to upper 80s and we'll be under mainly sun filled skies through the middle of the afternoon then a chance for a few more clouds developing very similar to what we saw yesterday afternoon where we did see a few clouds bubble up into the afternoon hours but overall more sun than clouds for your afternoon today really a great day today but looking at towards tomorrow and friday a bit of a warm-up of more details with that eight day forecast coming up in just a couple minutes guys all right, Jackie, thank you. Happening now, morning commuters are boarding trains and buses hours after a violent confrontation at Metro Center. This morning, the search is underway to find the person who stabbed two people. We know now that a man and woman were stabbed right on the platform. The man was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Happening today, a long-awaited decision that could help millions of Americans. President Biden is expected to deliver on his campaign promise to provide up to $10,000 in debt cancellation. Now we have team coverage this morning, starting with our consumer reporter, Ben Dennis. A lifesaver on student loans? 
With graduation gone and debt weighing down millions of Americans, federal loan repayments will resume after August 31st. According to new reporting, $10,000 could be canceled, a plan that would apply to borrowers making $125,000 or less each year. It's unknown if the White House might also extend a pause on payments. Is $10,000 enough? Should it go farther than that? So I'm in $160,000 worth of debt. Is $10,000 enough? Like, is that going to make a big impact for me? Probably not. I'm trying to live on my own, you know, as everything else is inflated and going up. Like, this will just, anything helps. So I would appreciate if Biden hears this. <laughs> Our sister outlet, The Hill, now reports a $10,000 loan cancellation could be announced Wednesday. Until then, top officials have remained relatively quiet since U.S. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona teased this to network Sunday shows. The American people will hear directly from us uh, because we recognize this is an important issue across the country. There are loan forgiveness programs for federal, state, and local government employees. And in Maryland, people with significant debt can take advantage of a student debt tax credit. More than 9,000 people reportedly got roughly a $1,000 benefit from this credit last year. We're not slowing down. We want to make sure that college is more accessible and more affordable. And as our Ben Dennis reporting, if you are not personally impacted by this, chances are you likely know someone with student loan debt. DC News Now's Christy Matino continues our team coverage this morning. And Christy, you've been breaking down these numbers. What are we seeing total wise for the country right now? Corey, take a look at yourself behind me right here. This is that total and as you can see this just keeps going up by the second this is from a website called collegedebt.com and if my math is correct we're nearing two trillion dollars and now millions of americans are awaiting this decision from president biden here's how people living in the dmv would be impacted educationdata.org breaks down the numbers by state so according to the website maryland and virginia have the highest rate of debt $6.5 billion of the total debt is coming from people who live in Washington, D.C. West Virginia is second lowest at about $7 billion. Maryland then skyrocketing to $35.9 billion. And Virginia, you're coming in the highest at $42.4 billion. The Student Borrower Protection Center reports every 26 seconds, one of those student loan borrowers defaults on their loans. So that means this entire time I've been reading to you, that's about four people. In studio, Christy Matino, DC News Now. All right, Christy, thank you. Your time right now is 8.08. .08. Happening today, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan is traveling from Annapolis to Baltimore, where he is expected to announce new initiatives aimed at curbing violent crime there. But back here inside the Beltway, people in Prince George's County, they're speaking out after a deadly streak of violence closer to home. Our contributor Larry Calhoun of DC Real Time News heard Hogan was heading to Baltimore. He took to Twitter to call him out, saying, quote, I sure hope Governor Larry Hogan will put some attention on Prince George's County because County Executive Angela also Brooks could use some help. It has been nothing but hell the last two weeks. Put your pride to the side and ask for help, end quote. Now, DC News Now also tried contacting also Brooks for comment. So far, we have not heard back. And developing this morning, Prince George's County Police are now saying a child who was found not breathing last Thursday was murdered. Detectives tell us they found the five-year-old Pradeline Delanoy at our Prince George's County home in Capitol Heights. She was rushed to a hospital in D.C. where she died. The office of the chief medical examiner says the little girl died from blunt force trauma and ruled her death a homicide. People around town from neighbors to police left stunned by what happened. I was just distraught and just devastated. A young child um, dying uh, under those circumstances is horrible. And it's shocking because I have a daughter, she's 14, and, you know, I couldn't imagine. I definitely couldn't imagine at all. It was just heartbreaking. Capitol Heights police say there is no prior history at the child's home. If you have any information about this case, you are asked to call police or contact crime solvers. Breaking now, people living in this tense city are going to have to find somewhere else to go. The National Park Service arrived there about an hour ago to clear that area out. Our Lex Warris has been there all morning live at that encampment on 9th and K Street. So Lex, you spoke with people there yesterday. What did they have to say?
Yeah, Tanaya, well, it's basically the same situation for them as it was yesterday. You know, they knew that this was coming. They had these signs posted up telling them that at 7 o'clock today, the National Park Service would be out here clearing out these encampments, but they still have no idea where they're going to be going after this. I'm going to step out of the way. I'm going to let our photographer, John, here show you a little bit of what's going on. We've got people from the National Park Service who are putting fencing up and new fencing and higher fencing up around the park here. And then from there, they're going to be clearing out the rest of the encampment that's on this side of the street, as well as a one with two or three tents on the other side of the street. The people who were staying here and have been, you know, calling this park home, they are trying to pick up their belongings, putting, putting, taking some of their tents down and folding them up to take with them and telling me that basically they're going to just have to find another place to go, another park where they can call home. And, and some of them tell me that this isn't even the first time that they've been pushed out of a park like this, but you know, they just found another place and now here they are again dealing with the same situation over and over again. I did speak with somebody from the National Park Service about that, asking what we can do to make sure this isn't happening over and over again and, and you know, to make sure there's actual help and that they're not having to come out here to, to push people out. They told me that they only come out here to clear encampments when there is a serious threat to public safety. And that's exactly what the park closure and safety notice said that there was, uh, you know, concerns with public health, safety and unsanitary conditions. Now, while the park's going to be closed, they are going to be for the next several months doing some rehabilitation and cleaning and maintenance, trying to get the grass to grow back and, and just clean the park up a little bit, which is why they have this fencing that they're putting around it to keep people out while they do that. But you know, the people he staying here, they tell me that they work hard to keep it as clean as possible. I've seen people the past two days up sweeping and trying to get trash all in one area. They say that it's really hard for them because they're not getting much help from the city and they're looking to Mayor Bowser to help them get some relief. They told me that they feel like they're being discriminated against as she's been giving help to migrants who are being bused here and not help to them. Take a listen. Miriam Browser, she has a little program going on down Union Station for the foreigners, and that's all fine. You know, this is USA. We like to help anyone that we can help, but you also got to deal with in-home first. Don't make your your own homeless and die out here, and you help with somewhere else, someone else. Now, there are a couple dozen people who are out here calling this park home, and they tell me that they are lifelong residents. Most of the people here, lifelong D.C. residents who simply just couldn't afford to live in their neighborhoods and their communities anymore, and that forced them onto the street as the cost of living here has risen so much. Like I said, they tell me that they're not really sure exactly where they're going to go. The Department of Human Services tells me they hope that they'll take advantage of shelter options, and people tell me that that's just not an option for them for their own safety concerns inside of those shelters. Of course, we're going to continue following up to see what can be done. And coming up today at noon, you're going to hear from the National Park Service about exactly what those safety issues were that was going on here and what we can do to address this in the future. For now, live in Mount Vernon Triangle, I'm Lex Suarez, DC News Now. Thank you, Lex. Thank you, Lex. Well, students at DC Public Schools will notice some new faces when they head to class next week. The district will enroll migrant students arriving in the district. DCPS did not respond to questions about its specific plans, but issued a statement to DC News Now. It reads in part, we are proud to welcome students to DCPS. We have a process in place to support the families who have arrived here under these circumstances and will be providing direct enrollment and other DCPS support. Organizations such as SAMU First Response says enrolling kids in school is very important, but the schools must be properly equipped to help them. We see kids all the way up to 16, 17 uh, that come with really high needs um, that have been, especially the children that come from Venezuela, that have been traveling for two months with their families. So uh, their level of trauma is extremely high. And this morning, it's still not exactly clear just how many students will enroll in DCPS. Our national flag has become a global symbol of courage, a symbol of all who value a free life. Where there is blue and yellow, there is no and there will be no tyranny. 
Where there is blue and yellow, there are no, and there will not be savages. Happening now, Ukrainians remaining patriotic, celebrating their country's Independence Day. Fears of ramped up Russian attacks are not stopping Ukrainians from raising their blue and yellow flags. Today marked six months since Russia invaded the neighboring nation with no end in sight. This morning, the New York Times reporting more than 5,500 people in Ukraine have been killed. And at this time, six and a half million Ukrainians have already left their country over the last three months. Meantime, President Vladimir Zelensky marking a grim milestone by holding on to hope. He is pledging to take back Crimea and restore freedom for all Ukrainians.